Hello, my name is Kelly Cunningham, and my project is entitled Identifying Locations in the Greater DC Area that are most likely to be developed in the next 10 years. So as many of you may know, the Chesapeake Bay has been suffering from poor water quality for quite some time. However, what many of you may not know are what are those driving forces behind the decline in the water quality. Well, there are many factors that are contributing to the decline in the water quality, but one of the largest factors is the increase in the amount of stormwater runoff that's going into the Chesapeake Bay. Now, to understand stormwater runoff, we first must understand how an undisturbed natural habitat would function. So, I want you to envision this landscape several hundred years ago. You're probably envisioning plenty of trees, plenty of vegetation. So typically, in this type of ecosystem, when it rains, the vegetation absorbs most of the water, and if there's any toxins or pollutants in the water, the vegetation is able to filter these out. Now fast forward to present day. Envision the landscape now. Of course, the amount of vegetation has decreased significantly and has been replaced with what we call impervious surface. Now, what constitutes impervious surface? Any surface that cannot absorb water. So for instance, roads, buildings. In this case, when we have a rain event, the excess water that cannot be absorbed by the vegetation runs off of the impervious surface and down into our storm drains, oftentimes carrying with it pollutants such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. This is ultimately what is contributing to the decline in the water quality. So why do we have so much impervious surface? Well, the increase in population. So as population increases, we warrant the need for more housing and infrastructure to house that population, hence the increase in impervious surface. So the goal of my project was to identify locations in the DC, Maryland area that are most likely to be developed in the next 10 years. I did this by examining factors such as projected percent change in population, percent change in housing, um, and then also examining specific projects that might not be undertaken such as large developments. From that, I evaluated all the parameters and developed a list of 10 locations most likely to be developed. The idea is now to advocate for those areas to implement sustainable practices that will help reduce the overall storm water that is entering the bay. So how can this be done? Well, hopefully by leaving some of the land in its natural state, and if not, by implementing storm water management practices such as rain gardens, rain barrels, and green roofs. Ultimately, the hope is that we reduce the amount of storm water runoff entering the Chesapeake Bay and improve the water quality of the Chesapeake Bay.